holy day of Swami Niranjananandaji's birth. Swami Niranjananandaji was a very illustrious disciple of Sri Ramakrishna. We all know that Sri Ramakrishna had 16 monastic disciples, starting from Vivekananda, Brahmanandaji and all. So Swami Niranjananandaji was one of those important five disciples whom Sri Ramakrishna used to call as Nitya Siddhas or Ishwara Koti. Ishwara Koti means they belong to a special group of realized souls. Realized souls themselves are all, they belong to a special group. Among the realized people, these people have a speciality that realization of the other people came after great struggle. But these people, these five people whom we, Sri Ramakrishna named, Swami Vivekananda, Swami Brahmananda, Swami Niranjanananda, Swami Yogananda, and Swami Premananda, these five, he called them as Ishwara Koti. They are Ishwaras. Even when they are born, they are not bound by any karma. They come to show the way to others. And they come, they are almost, if Sri Ramakrishna was not there, we would have mistaken any one of these for avatara. So great were they. If Sri Ramakrishna was not there, nobody could have denied that Swami Vivekananda is the avatara of this age. So great was Swami Vivekananda. Because of Sri Ramakrishna, Sri Ramakrishna said, he is an Ishwara Koti. So these great people, the five people whom he named, one of them was Swami Niranjanananda. He was a special disciple of Sri Ramakrishna. His father's name in his pre-monastic days, his name in pre-monastic days was Nitya Niranjan. Later on he became Niranjanananda. So his father's name was Ambikacharan Ghosh. We don't have his mother's name in any of his biographies. The place where he was born is near our Belur Mutt in Calcutta little, some 40, 50 kilometers away. Rajarhat Vishnupur. Vishnupur, there are so many. So, Rajarhat Vishnupur is one of the villages in the district of 24 Paragana. He was born exact time and date is not available, but he was born on a Shravana Purnima of 1862. That means somewhere in August of 1862. That means he was the elder to Swami Vivekananda by about six months. And Sri Ramakrishna, when he saw him, he is told that he is born of a part of Sri Ramachandra. Ramachandra Amshe Junma. So he, is, he, is, he has been born as a part of Sri Ramachandra. That is why even in his young age, he was very much interested in playing with bow and arrow. Sri Ramachandra is known for his uh, dhanush and arrow. So even from his childhood, this little boy used to play with bow and arrow with all his friends. So when he grew up to go to school, then he was sent to Calcutta to his maternal uncle, Pandit Kali Krishna Mitra. So Kali Krishna Mitra was at Calcutta, so he used to stay with him and go to school and study. We don't know much about his studies, but when he grew up to be a young man, so he was, he got associated with a group of people who used to bring down ghosts upon themselves. They used to call themselves as medium. So these mediums are those persons who sit there and then they invoke a ghost to come upon them. And the ghost comes upon them and talks and tells whatever these people, anybody asks any question, the ghost will reply that question. And the belief is that ghosts know but more than human beings. But it is not true. How the human beings have become ghosts? So how will they become no, mo, more than the human being? They are also as erroneous as human beings are. They also tell lies as human beings tell. So it has all been found out by later people. But then he fall in, fell into a group of ghost researchers. And 
he used to have seances that means the ghost used to come very easily upon his body and he would be asked questions so and so is suffering from such and such a disease you please tell to which doctor he should go then he will tell some doctor's name they will go to the doctor and get some medicine and get cured but it happened once that very rich man from calcutta he came with a complaint that i have no sleep at all for years together i am suffering and suffering for a wink of sleep so i could not get a wink of sleep can you please suggest some medicine or a doctor then of course niranjan must have suggested some medicine or something and when he comes down from the seance people told oh you have told a medicine for the richest man here in calcutta then niranjan was so much uh, so much aghast to think that such a rich man so much of wealth so much of uh, so all the facilities with him he could not have a wink of sleep what is the meaning of life so if the meaning of life people think run behind wealth and opulence but with all that wealth and opulence he he hankers for one wink of sleep one and one hour or two hours of deep sleep which he could not get he this all the human life so he got disgusted with this seance and with this prescribing medicines then when he was about 18 year old he comes to sri ram krishna and when he came to sri ram krishna he doesn't come alone he comes with another one pyare chan mitra he was also interested in this ghost research so he came and pyare chan mitra was a very proud man he told this niranjan and all you see we let us go and then make sri ram krishna himself the medium we shall bring a ghost up on him and then i will show you how i can demonstrate to you so they all went with a great pride and they requested sir sri ram krishna welcomed them naturally so they requested him sir we want you to become a medium so you please sit here then we will mesmerize you and then the ghost will come up on you sri ram krishna like a child he said all right i will sit then he sat on the place where they wanted them to sit they went on trying all methods of mesmerization they looked at his eyes they showed their fingers and the palm they moved around they uttered mantras nothing <laughs> happened i part of it they tried nothing happened upon him then that pyarachan felt defeated he said you have got a very strong will you cannot be <laughs> mesmerized what strong will he the lord himself so this fellow is trying to mesmerize the lord who has mesmerized the whole universe so this fellow got defeated and more than getting defeated by sri ram krishna before his disciples he got defeated niranjan lost all faith in this fellow so he left him so when parachand went away sri ram krishna called niranjan aside and told him hey niranjan if you go on thinking of ghost 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 you will yourself become a ghost one day if you think of god 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 you will become a god what would you become he was a 18 year old boy very simple and guileless he said i would be, i would say god god and become a god then why do you get associated with these fellows this ghost ghost leave this ghost aside and that was the end of association of uh, niranjan with this ghost party so the ghost party went away then sri ram krishna at started attracting niranjan he became more and more affectionate then he started coming very more more often to dakshineshwar one day sri ram krishna told him look niranjan do you know the difference between the love of god and love of men then niranjan said you tell me sir then sri ram krishna explained if you do 99 good to people and by some mistake one bad you do then people will forget all that 99 good and remember only that one bad and they will go on spreading scandals against you they will go on cursing you so and so has done such a bad thing for me 
they forget all the 99 goods whereas if you do one good to god 99 bad that's what we are all doing only one day by forgetfulness we go into temple once in a year and god remembers that and he has kept us in this good condition otherwise how much we should be grateful for him from morning till evening if the breath we take and we are alive he has given us the water we live from if we do not get water we would be dead one day he gives us water he gives us air without getting any charge from us no tax he goes on supplying not a single one of us remembering god has given all these things so 99 bad if you do to god and do only one good he will remember that one good and always bless you for that one which would you choose he says i would choose god sir god's love in place of human love yes that is the correct thing so from that time onwards niranjan started loving god and god's representative is guru more and more and again after some time he goes to sri ram krishna and sri ram krishna was very eager to meet him as soon as niranjan came he went and embraced him and startedly started shedding tears crying out loudly and then said o oh, niranjan o oh, niranjan days are passing away days are passing away quickly and then when will you realize god till now you have not realized god it is only a month or a few weeks he is coming sri ram krishna is telling how long have you been coming here days are passing away and when will you realize god all is lost if you don't realize him immediately so don't waste even a single day you must realize god now itself we do not know when then when our next day is we cannot be sure what will bring us ne- next day so you must realize god the earliest days are passing away and you have not realized god till now i am so much worried about you when sri ram krishna said this niranjan was completely dismayed he was astonished who is this person who is so much concerned about me only a few weeks of acquaintance and he is crying for my god realization he wants me to realize god as early as possible so on that occasion niranjana and the stayed niranjan stayed with sri ram krishna for 3 uh, days continuously he did not go home at all and we know that he was staying with his uncle so uncle got worried when he came to know he is going to sri ram krishna then he thought you should not allow him to go there at all if he allow he is charmed by that man and so he will stay over there and he will neglect his study and all his career will be lost therefore they kept him under their ins- under their circumspection they would that they would see him always in the house almost like a house arrest then he was in the house continuously waiting for a chance to go and the servants were all instructed don't allow him to go out to the compound of our house the servants were very alert one day one servant saw the niranjan is sitting in his room and a big halo around his head like the god's pictures we see a halo around their head so this servant went and saw niranjan sitting and halo around his head he got frightened oh this divine boy so he may curse us if we go on stopping from stopping from going outside we shall not guard against him let him go wherever he want he went and informed the other servants also all people left him out so he opened the gate and went away to dakshineshwar again and started staying with sri ram krishna when his uncle came to know about this so what could he do if the servants do not help him in keeping the boy he cannot be guarding the boy always so he also kept quiet that is how niranjan got freedom and start for going to sri ram krishna and come one day he heard that sri ram krishna had gone to kakurgachi kakurgachi is the place of one of his devotees ramchandra datta so he has gone to kakurgachi he heard he straight away went to kakurgachi to meet sri ram krishna then master mahashiva there with sri ram krishna 
then Niranjan arrived. As soon as Niranjan arrived, Sri Ramakrishna was very happy. Then showing Niranjan to Yam, he said, You see, Yam, this boy is very guileless. Guile, guile means the deception. So deceptionless. He is open, very straightforward. He doesn't hide anything. Whatever comes into his mind, he speaks straight away. He doesn't, he's not afraid of anyone. So he is guileless, without any maya. Vanjakam gadayade. He has no, nothing to hide. So he is such a plain, guileless boy. And then Sri Ramakrishna further said, guilelessness does not come to everyone so easily. Lot of asceticism is to be practiced. Lot of tapasya is to be done. Then only man becomes guileless. That we see, even a small children, after a particular age, they become guileful. They also want to hide something. So they don't want to tell mother something or they don't tell father. They will hide something from their brother. They start hiding things. That means guilelessness goes. For, for various reasons, guilelessness is a great spiritual quality. Plain, there is nothing to hide. Everything is open. My room is open, my, uh, my box is open, my pockets are open, my movements are open. I announced to everybody where I go, where I come. How many people can you find like that? Impossible to find. So, Sri Ramakrishna used to value his guilelessness very much as a great spiritual quality. So, he is telling him, this boy is very guileless. Guilelessness comes after great austerities. So, this boy is a great uh, boy with a lot of merit. He, his austerities have destroyed all his sins. That is why he is so plain and so guileless. He does not want to hide anything. Everything is open with him. And he used to tell. He has, it is as, if, as, if, as it were. He tells everybody, this is yours you take. That is mine you give me. Let us go. <laughs> this is how he used to move with the world. With the, move, with the world he has no other uh, connection. Nothing to hide. So you have your debt, take from him. Finish my, your debt. What, is, what, what you owe to me, give it to me. So let us be squares. So this is how... Niranjan lived in the world without any guile. So Sri Ramakrishna once came to know that Niranjan goes to an office and works and earns some salary. Then when next Niranjan came and met him, he told Niranjan, you see there is a cover of black cloud on your face. Cover of black cloud. You see he has gone to office and he has honestly worked and he has got his salary. So, Sri Ramakrishna did not like that also. Why should you go and earn when, if there is no necessity, why should you go and serve under somebody else? You serve only the Lord. No other person you should serve. That was the idea of Sri Ramakrishna. That's why he says, there is a cover of black cloud on your face. What is the matter? So, he thought and thought. He did not think that is a salary or earning a salary honestly can be a black cloud upon him. Then Sri Ramakrishna asked, do you go to office? Do you go and serve somebody else and get a salary? He said, yes. Why do you want salary? Can you not live simple as you are here? No mother, my mother is very poor. I have no father. So for the sake of mother I have to earn. Then Sri Ramakrishna became very compassionate. He said, oh, for the sake of mother you are earning. Then that is blameless. There is no blame in earning for the sake of mother. Because mother is Brahman herself. Brahma Mai Ma. Mother is Brahman. For the sake of mother, you can do anything. Sri Ramakrishna's tremendous love for mother. And that is what he has shown to the world also. You may neglect anybody, but not your mother. So mother is Brahma Mai. Once for Master Mahashay, Master Mahasaya asked Sri Ramakrishna, if Mother is Brahma Mai, she is the embodiment of Brahman, can we meditate on Mother herself, Mother's form herself, when we meditate on God? Sri Ramakrishna said, yes, certainly. You can meditate on Mother's form itself and attain to the highest Brahma Jnana, because Mother represents Brahman Himself. So, 
after hearing that he was earning for the sake of his mother, oh, for the sake of mother, if you earn, there is no blemish. Then he started telling all others also. You see, this boy goes to the office and earns like others, but others earn for themselves, selfish fellows. That is wrong. Whereas he is earning for his sake of mother. And later on also, he is to tell, he, whatever he earns, he spends more than what he earns for the sake of others. He will go and then get some money from some friend and give it to some poor fellow. So he spends more than what he gets by his honest labor. So that was the great greatness of the young man. Sri Ramakrishna one day remarked, you see, I saw in a vision today, who has got what type of nature? Of all his disciples, he used to say, so and so is of this nature. So he said, I saw Narayan and Rakal and Niranjan, they have a rational nature, that is masculine nature. Men go on arguing, arguing, fighting and, lo and the ch chopping logic for everything. So he, he said, Narayan, Rakal and Niranjan are of that type, of masculine nature. That means they are of a rational nature. They will not accept simply if you teach something. They want reason for it. They are some, 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 somebody like a Jnana Yogi. So they want to reason and then go by the path of reason and attain Brahman. So about Niranjana, Niranjana Nanji, this was Sri Ramakrishna's idea. So when, when once uh, Niranjananji went to Balaram's house, Sri Ramakrishna was there. As soon as he saw Niran Niranjan, he just embraced him. Then he started telling, Oh, Alek Niranjan. Alek Niranjan means the Niranjan who cannot be seen at all by the eyes. Alek means Alakshita. Alakshya. Lakshya means to, to see. Clearly, you cannot see. Can you see Brahman? Can you see the sky? You cannot sky. That which cannot be seen, that is Adrishya, that which is beyond sight, Alak Niranjan, you are the pure Niranjan, please come. And then he became so much uh, in a spiritual mood. He went into a high spiritual mood and started telling, when will I become blessed? by feeding you like a Kausalya. You have been born for my sake. Sri Ramakrishna went on telling like this in a, in a very highly ecstatic mood. That means he is seeing Niranjan as the boy Rama himself. So when a boy Rama is there, Nir Kausalya used to feel, when will I feed my child? So Sri Ramakrishna started telling, when will I be blessed by feeding you? You have been born for my sake. Then Sri Ramakrishna was very proud. If somebody said, some of his disciples, that we don't want to get entangled into the world, then Sri Ramakrishna would be in ecstasy. He said, that is what is to be done. You should never get entangled into the world. Be in the world. But why should you get entangled? Let us go around the garden. Why should we get entangled by some tree or some creeper or some thorns? You need not get entangled. You can go, or go around the garden. So like that, if anybody said, I don't want to get entangled to the world. I don't want to get into a job. I don't want to get into marriage. I don't want to have be tied up to some little house or family. If somebody said like that, Sri Ramakrishna would appreciate it very much. One day he is telling to M about Niranjananda. You see, this Niranjan, he says he will not marry. So when somebody told, why don't you marry, he immediately exclaimed, Oh, marriage, that is the whirlpool of Vishalakshi. Vishalakshi is whirlpool, that Amoda river, it's a big river. So there is the whirlpool is there, and whirlpool is a dangerous thing. Whirlpool, big ships also get drowned. In the sea, the navigator must be very careful. Huge whirlpools are there. In Ganga also, huge whirlpools are there. Ship, when once they get there, you cannot get out of it. You will, 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 and you'll be sucked down, and then it will get drowned. So immediately he says, Maharaj, that is the whirlpool of Vishalakshi. There was a big whirlpool. It had named Vishalakshi. 
If you go there, you never return, you get drowned. So getting into marriage was such a terrible thing for him. So Sri Ramakrishna was very happy that he is absolutely detesting to get entangled into the world. That is the main thing. Then Sri Ramakrishna further remarked, you see, he is so much afraid of entanglement. He want to be spiritually free. A person who wants to be free, not the freedom of the senses, but freedom from the senses. Ramakrishna Ranji always used to say freedom is of the two kinds. What we ask for in our house, uh, what our uh, younger fellows want, is freedom of the senses. We want to do whatever we want. We want to eat whatever we want. We want to see whatever we want. Freedom of the senses they want. It is not a safe one. You must keep your senses under control. Otherwise, we become like animals. Animals have got freedom of senses. The animal thinks at 12 o'clock in the night, let me eat something. It goes on searching and catches hold of some prey and starts eating at 12 o'clock. When you are going in the road on 12 o'clock, some dogs are eating, some cats are eating. At 12 they eat, at 1 they eat, at 2 o'clock in the and noon at 2 o'clock you see, dogs are sleeping. They should be eating at that time. They sleep at that time. They have got freedom of the senses. So man asking for freedom of the senses, he wants to become a brute, he wants to become an animal only. That is no freedom. That's why Swami Ramakrishnananda used to say, you want freedom from the senses. I don't want to be drawn by the senses. My senses say, I will go and see TV at 5.30 in the 6 o'clock in the evening. I should say, 6 o'clock you should meditate. You don't see TV. Then if my mind meditates, I have got freedom from the sense. Freedom from the my senses wanted to go and see TV. I heard them, no, you will not see TV. You will go and meditate. And the mind meditates. This is what we want. We must have our senses under our control. So Sri Ramakrishna says, this boy has got control over his mind. That is why he says, I don't want to get entangled. And then I saw him sitting on a heap of light. Light means consciousness. The consciousness, the, the God-realized person, he is always in the consciousness of God. He feels that I am one with God. God is in me and I am in God. So he is as it were sitting on a heap of conscious light. So Sri Ramakrishna says, I saw him sitting on a heap of light. Sri Ramakrishna also saw Swami Vivekananda also sitting amidst a huge heap of light. From there only he goes near him and then tells him, Narendra, he calls him. Then he opens his eyes from meditation. Then he tells him, I am going to the world, you will also come. So he, Nar Niranjan also was seen sitting on a heap of light by Sri Ramakrishna. Then Sri Ramakrishna gets the disease of cancer in his throat. So he, he was removed from Dakshineshwar, first to Shampukur, then from Shampukur he was shifted to Kasipur. In Kasipur, Sri Ramakrishna once saw Niranjan coming to him and he started telling him in an ecstatic mood, you are my father, I will sit on your lap. Sri Ramakrishna would go into several moods. So you are my father, I will sit on your lap. So much intimate was the relationship of the Guru with the disciple. Once Niranjan was travelling from Calcutta to Dakshineshwar by a boat. Boat, so many people were sitting there. And when they came nearer the Dakshineshwar temple, you can see the Dakshineshwar temple from half a far long earlier itself. Then somebody saw the temple and they started talking about the temple. Somebody else said there is a Paramahamsa there. And somebody else started telling, we know that Paramahamsa, he is not a good man. He is disturbing all these young people by pursuing their studies. He is just harming, he is harming their career. So he is uh, spoiling their heads. He is making them mad. He is himself mad. And he is making all the young people also mad. They started criticizing Sri Ramakrishna. Then Niranjan was coming. Niranjan had a very athletic body, very strong. And that was a small boat carrying some 10 people or 12, 12 people. He went and stood on one end and then said, one word more about Sri Ramakrishna's criticism 
I will drown this whole, whole boat. All of us will go down into Ganga. Then all of them, they just frightened. No, 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 please don't do that. Just stop and then promise me you will never do more anymore. Then only I will leave you from this danger. He started rocking the boat like that. It, it would have it would capsized then itself. Somehow, you know, they all apologized. They promised that they will not criticize. Then he left them all. In the meanwhile, it came to the Dakshineshwar Ghat. He got down and then came to Sri Ramakrishna and told his bravado. You see how I frightened those ten fellows and they, they were criticizing you. I silenced them by rocking the boat. Then Sri Ramakrishna was also very much dismayed. You were about to drown the whole lot. You see, one or two people might have criticized. But what did the others do? They did not do anything. But the way you were rocking, suppose it had capsized. All the people would have gone into the Ganges. What a bad incident it should be. You were in a fit of anger and you didn't know what you were doing. He said, anger is a demon. Don't get into its clutches. Never come under anger. Control your anger. If people criticize, why should you bother about it? So many people criticize because they do not know or they have been misinformed. So you should not take it seriously. You just neglect them. Think they are worms. They don't know. So neglect them. Don't go and do such dangerous things. Because he was so strong, he could punish. So Sri Ramakrishna advised him. You see, a strong man should not use his power. He should be very gentle and docile. Whereas a weak man must use his power and get confidence. Otherwise, weak man will get inferiority complex. So he, he would advise another devotee of him who did not protest when somebody, somebody spoke against Sri Ramakrishna. He did not protest. He told the disciple, Do you know what the Shastras say? When your guru is criticized, cut off the head of that fellow, if you can. If you cannot, at least leave the place and go. Don't hear the calumnization or uh, speaking against, speaking ill of your guru. So this is what his advice was to another one, because he was a weak person. So he should become strong. Here he was a too strong a person. He must be reduced to the normal strength. He should not misuse his power for the detriment of others. That's what Sri Ramakrishna said. So don't care for opinions. You are about to cause so much of harm and would have incurred so much of sin and would have caused so much of trouble. So don't come under anger. Anger is the demon. You would have caused the death of so many. He warned him. Then Sri Ramakrishna one day found Niranjana and eating. Niranjan eating quite a lot of ghee. Sri Ramakrishna warned him, don't eat so much of ghee. It is not good for a sadhu, the, a young man who will become a sadhu to take so much of ghee. Because all very rich food, it becomes a rajasic food. The spiritual people are supposed to take sattvic food, light food. So don't eat so, ghee so much. Sri Ramakrishna was aware of all little things also. What they eat, how much they eat, when they eat. So he instructed him like that. And of course he must have obeyed his orders. Then once the talk about some good people in Calcutta came, then Niranjan started praising Devendranath Tagore, the father of Rabindranath Tagore. Devendranath Tagore led a very pious life during his last days. He was a big zamindar. He had a lot of estates and all that, very rich man. And we know Rabindranath Tagore was the 14th among the 16 children. He was the 14th. Rabindranath Tagore was the 14th child. So Devendranath was more or less a very, very worldly man. Later on he became turned to spirituality. This young man was praising him. Sri Ramakrishna did not like it. He said, he has enjoyed the life so much. Even in his last uh, part of his life, if he does not take the name of God, what will people say of him? They will poo poo him. Even in this age, he does not take the name of God. So, there is nothing very great. But then Niranjananji, he has developed a fascination. He will hold on to his own argument. No, sir, he has cleared the loan of his father. His father has left some loan. So, Devadhanar 
clear the loan. Then Sri Ramakrishna became more angry. He said, don't be silly. If a rich son does not repay the loan of the father, is he a son? Is he a man? Sri Ramakrishna was very straightforward in that. It is dharma. You see, when your father is unable to pay, he will get a bad name. He might have passed away. But wherever he is, that debt is made by him. People will curse him. Therefore, it is the duty of the son to clear the loan. There is nothing very great about it. So, God has given him riches. Even then, if he does not clear the loan of the father, he is a man. That was a very strong term used, Sri Ramakrishna used to use. Once, you know, Sri Ramakrishna advised Ramlal to do something. So, Ramlal said, Oh, let it take place. I am not bothered about it. What? You don't want to do this much for some elders. Are you a man? That are you a man is a very strong remark he used to make in Rama in in Ramayana. The strongest term Sita uses against Ramchandra is you are an, an Arya. You are not an Arya. That is a very strong term used by any woman in against any husband. So Ramayana Ramayana it is said, you are an Anarya, you have you have called me that I am a fallen woman, you want to test me by the Agni, you are an Anarya. See what sort of bad words we use today. To use the word Anarya was considered as the strongest um, scolding that you can give. Here was the cultured person. He says, are you a man? If he asked, that was the worst you know he can say. With all his anger, he told him, if a mad son does not return the loan of the father, is he a man? So then after Niranjanandi kept quiet. You see, he is, he is making the young disciples, how teach, teaching them how to evaluate the world. You must have your own foot rule to measure the world. More cultured we become, more spiritual we become, we measure the world with that foot rule. So this way we will have, we change our very outlook about the world. Then Latu, Latu was telling one day about Niranjananji, how he was influenced by the spiritual touch of Sri Ramakrishna. Latu Maharaj says, once Sri Ramakrishna touched Niranjan, as soon as he touched Niranjan, became ecstatic and he started repeating the name of God and he was with open eyes, he would not close his eyes at all. For three continuous days and nights, with open eyes, he was seeing a spiritual light and going on repeating the Nama Japa. So he went on repeating the name without winking even once. And for three days and nights, he was seeing the divine light around him. That was the power of the touch of Sri Ramakrishna. Then Sri Ramakrishna showed Niranjan to Latu and then told, Now you see, he was getting ghost upon himself. Now the ghost of God has come upon him. Can he get out of it now? One day, two days, three days. Full three days, he cannot get out of it. He is just captured by this ghost of God. And then afterwards, slowly, Niranjan came down and then reported about his ecstatic experience. That was, uh, that was one, the one, his real initiation. But a formal initiation also took place on one day. Sri Ramakrishna initiated him with a mantra. On that day also, he went on repeating the mantra continuously for three days. And ajapa ajapa, without even op op opening his lips, he went on repeating the name of God by his, from his mind, by his very breath itself. So afterwards, the, in the days of Sham Pukur, where Sri Ramakrishna lived for some time, before he came to the Kasipur garden, in 1885, Sri Ramakrishna was there in the Shampukur house where treatment was going on. Then on the Kali Puja day, maybe November, October, November, so Kali Puja day, he asked, let us do Kali Puja today, you all make arrangements. So all the devotees arranged everything for Kali Puja. And then evening came, Kali Puja is usually started at about 9 o'clock in the night. Then Sri Ramakrishna was sitting. He is not telling anything who will start the puja and what, uh, who will do uh, the, be the tantradharak. 
who will help the main pujari. Nothing, no instruction he gave. And then he is simply sitting quiet. At nine o'clock he went into Samadhi. He is sitting on his cot and he went into Samadhi. All the arrangements have been made for Kali Puja. And Kali image also has not been brought. There is no second image. Not even a Kali picture also is kept. And he went into Samadhi. When will he, he will come down from Samadhi? Puja is to be started at nine o'clock. They have no instruction at all. All the disciples are sitting there. Then Niranjan was also sitting. Girish Chandra Ghosh was there. M was there. And so many other devotees were there. Then suddenly, Girish said, the meaning of this means, you see, he has not kept a picture of Kali. He has, he has not asked us to bring even an image of Kali. But he has asked us to do the puja. And he is now in an ecstatic mood. So he has himself become Kali. Let us worship him. This is what Girish said. As soon as Girish said, immediately it was appreciated by Niranjan. Niranjan was the person, first he took two handfuls of flowers. He went and offered at the feet of Sri Ramakrishna. Jai Brahmamai, Jai Brahmamai. And all the other devotees came and offered, telling Jai Brahmamai to Sri Ramakrishna himself. And Sri Ramakrishna stood up, just like Kali. So, raising his one hand, Abhaya Hasta, and another hand is Varada Varada Hasta. The hand that gives all the boons, like this. And this hand, the Abhaya Hasta giving all fearlessness to everyone. So Sri Ramakrishna stood in that Kali's pose and as, as long as they were doing puja, he was standing there in ecstasy. So like living Kali, they worshipped him. That was a great incident in the life of uh, Niranjanananda. Then one day Sri Ramakrishna asked him, most probably in Shampukur itself, how do you like me? Sri Ramakrishna used to ask this question to many of his disciples. Because the love we have, the depth of love we have, means so much of advancement in our spiritual life. We advance to that extent, in any particular field, to the extent we love our gurus. Yes, a musician learns so much, to the extent he loves his guru. And the guru in turn loves, loves him. Yes, the person whom the guru loves most, he will become the greatest disciple of him. It is the well-known thing. Even, uh, even in the college studies also, if some professor loves a student very much, then sincerely for his studies, that boy will certainly will shine. Similarly, in the spiritual life also, more the love for the disciple to the guru, quicker is the progress. Because the knowledge comes not out of any other uh, consideration. That so-and-so is a rich person, so-and-so will give me money, so-and-so will show me respect. All these are no consideration for a real guru. Real guru will impart his knowledge only out of the love. So if the, if the student loves him, he in turn out of love gives the whole of knowledge. So that is why Sri Ramakrishna is asking this question, how do you love me? Then Niranjananji replies, I loved you a little formerly, but now it has become impossible for me to live away from your place. I cannot leave this place. If I go out, I feel, no, no, I must go back. So, we, I feel I should be always with you and be serving you. So, Sri Ramakrishna was very much pleased. Then, when he was in Shampur, Shampukur, one of Sri Ramakrishna's uh, devotees, she was an actress, Vinodini. Vinodini was a famous actress in those times, in drama. Sri Ramakrishna had seen Vinodini as a uh, Sri Chaitanya, in the Chaitanya Leela of Girish Chandra Ghosh. So he has appreciated her, her, her acting as the Chaitanya. He had blessed her also. This lady, hearing that Sri Ramakrishna was ill, she wanted to see him. But the condition was at that time that nobody was allowed to see Sri Ramakrishna except his disciples, who also could see him from only distance at the particular time. Otherwise, Sri Ramakrishna was not allowed to be disturbed by anybody. So, and the guard at the gate was Niranjan. Niranjan would not allow anybody. But this Vinodini is insistent. My guru is there, he is ill, I must go and personally wish him and then come. So, what is to be done? 
only deceiving only the way. So Kalipada Ghosh was there, another disciple of Sri Ramakrishna. He said, all right, you dress yourself as a Britishman, a Englishman. So she dressed herself as an Englishman, so putting hat, and then she was fair, and this fair-looking English people, they, men and women, it's difficult to judge if they dress up like that. So she dressed herself like an English gentleman, and as if he is his friend, Kalipada Ghosh came, and then Niranjan was standing at the gate. So, you see, this gentleman has come, so he wants to meet Sri Ramakrishna. I'll just take him for a few minutes. Then, you know, Niranjan was very much impressed. See, some British, Britisher has come. After all, British were ruling at that time. They were supposed to be our lords. So, such a ruling person, he has come to see our Guru. It's a great respect for our Guru. So, all right, go and come back. So, he led them in. So both of them went there, they went to Sri Ramakrishna. Sri Ramakrishna immediately could know that this is Vinodini only. And then he had a big laugh and then he gave her also some instructions. And then when they came, after they returned only, then Niranjan came to know that he has been deceived like that. So he was very much ashamed that he was deceived. So he, he vowed, I shall be more careful. Unfortunately for him, the, the next day, next time whoever came, among them was Ram Chandra Datta. He is one of the great devotees of Sri Ramakrishna. He brought some sweets. He wanted to go to Sri Ramakrishna and offer the sweets and come away. No, you cannot go. Nobody will be allowed. So he went on arguing. He did not allow him at all in the end. He left that uh, sweets, etc. with him. All right, you yourself go and give it to him. And went away. So when he became very angry and went away, Latu Maharaj was there. Latu became very cross because Latu was working with Ramchandra Datta before he came to see Ramakrishna. So he felt very bad. My master, he was not allowed to go to Guru Maharaj. Then he went and harangued the Niranjan. You see, the other day, Vinodini came and dressed like a white, woman, white man and you were deceived and you accepted it. Now, because Ramchandra Babu came as he was, so he did not allow him. Suppose he had dressed himself in some other way and come, could you not have allowed? So like that he was arguing. Sri Ram Krishna heard that. Then he called Latu. He said, what were you arguing with him? Then Latu told. You see, he did like that. Today he did not allow Ram Chandra Datta. Then Sri Ram Krishna went, uh, he bypassed the whole incident. He only warned Latu. Latu, don't find fault with others. What has Niranjan did? He has done his duty. He has not allowed anybody. So he has not allowed Ramchandra. That is his part. His duty he is doing. Who are you to go and ask him why you did like this? Are you in charge of him? Don't find fault with others. See only good thing in others. Then from that time onwards, Latu became very careful in criticizing others. One day he refused. Another one, young devotee also. Atul, brother of Girish Chandra Ghosh. Sri Ramakrishna is like this young man. So he wanted to see Sri Ramakrishna. Naturally, Niranjan said, no, you cannot go. So Atul, he was a young man like him. He said, all right, until I am being, I, I am called personally, I will not come back again. So he, he just vowed and went away like that. Then Sri Ramakrishna came to know. Then he asked Niranjan, why did you refuse him? He is a young boy, he has come and he has been coming here, you know him. So, go and bring him. So, Niranjan went all the way to his house. When he came to his door, he did not allow. He was asked to go to his house and bring him. That was only to break that sort of arrogance. Arrogance comes many times when we do our duties also. We forget that the duty is also is a, is a chance given to us to serve the Lord, not to become arrogant. The, the Jaya Vijayas became arrogant and they had to come like a Ravana or Kumbhakarna. Just like that here, perhaps he had become a little arrogant. To teach him humility, he asked him to go to his house and bring him. So he went to his house, brought him. That was how he learnt humility from Sri Ramakrishna. Then Sri Ramakrishna went away in Mahasamadhi. So they all, all the other young disciples, they went to a village called Antpur, which was the birthplace of Swami Premanandas. So there, there was a big tank. 
So in that tank, all of them wanted to have swim. But one of them did not know swimming. He just wanted to take simple bath. But when we got down, he slipped and fell into the water. And he was drowning and drowning. And there was nobody else strong enough. He was Trigunathitanam Swami, hefty body. So who will go and lift him? Nobody is strong enough. Then it was Niranjan who jumped into water, then pulled him out of the water. So he was always there. He had a great heart. He would serve not only the monks, his, uh, even the devotees, if they are ill, he would go and serve them. Ram Dutta, Balram Basu, when they became ill, then the Swami will go and serve them also. He had a very great heart. One day he was walking, bringing some sweets in his hand to the Baranagar Mutt. So in the Mutt they would offer for Guru Maharaj. When he is coming, the sweets are exposed. Perhaps it was just uh, in an open uh, donnai, in an open leaf, leaf cup. So there is some sandesh is kept there. He is holding it in his hand and he is bringing. So one small child was walking with, uh, with his mother. So the child saw the sweets. Perhaps the child was very hungry. So it said, Amma, I want those sweets. Amma, I want my sweet sweet. Went on crying, showing that sweet. And Niranjana and Swami looked back. So that boy is looking at his hand where the sweets are. Amma, I want that sweet. I want that sweet. He went back to the mother and they said, give this to the child. I'll take another sweet to Sri Ramakrishna. He went back to the shop, purchased separately, handed this over to the child. That, then the mother said, no, sir, my son will uh, incur sin because he has taken away the thing that was, that, that was to be offered to Guru Maharaj. Then Niranjana said, no, no, I saw Guru Maharaj himself in your child. So I have offered it to Guru Maharaj himself. So you take it, there is no sin. So he assuaged her fear, then went forward. Then afterwards, he started on pilgrimage. So we went to several great pilgrimages and he was the first man to go to Sri Lanka on his pilgrimage in 1897, 94. So he went to Sri Lanka and then afterwards he went to perhaps second time, third time also. Then in 1897, when Swamiji landed, he was there to receive him at Sri Lanka, at Colombo. Then he moved with Swami Vivekananda. He came to Madras. He came to me, he stayed. He stayed in our Vivekananda Rillam. Vivekananda Rillam, Sadananda, Niranjananda Ji, Swami Vivekananda, Mr. and Mrs. Muller, all these people stayed. That was a great scene. So when Sadananda was also a very hefty figure, Niranjananda also a very hefty figure, Swamiji. So all the three, they came in the procession and he stayed in that Vivekananda Rillam. And up afterwards he went on travelling with Swami Vivekananda from Colombo to Almora. Wherever Swamiji went, he was also with him. Later on when one Okakura from Japan came to see Swami Vivekananda and see some places in India, Swamiji was very ill. He said, Niranjananda will show you. So Niranjananda took Okakura. He is a very important uh, man from Japan. He took him to several places in the north. Again, when Swami Vivekananda becomes ill, then he became the goat doorkeeper again. So Swami Vivekananda is ill. All and sundry should not go and disturb him. So he became the gatekeeper. This time, one of the disciples of Swami Vivekananda, one brahmachari, so he came. He said, I want to go and see my guru. He said, no, you, you cannot go. So he, he would not allow him. That, that brahmachari was very, very powerful. He was waiting for an opportunity. Niranjana Swami was tall, hefty. And then he was, somebody came, he was talking to him. When he was talking, he put his two legs astride like this. So keeping his legs, legs astride, he was talking to him. This boy just went between the legs and on the other side of the stairs and got up and went away to see Swami Vivekananda. Hey, hey, he was shouting. The brahmachari could not be stopped. So when he came back, he was very happy. He said, unless you are so eager, can you get your Guru's darshan? He excused him. Similarly, he was very forthright. Someone, donor, promised a big amount for a philanthropic work. So when uh, 
when they went to ask for him that money then by the time it was some few days over then that philanthropist mind has changed so he had promised a 50000 rupees or so he said i cannot give you 50000 i will give you half he said what you have promised 50000 and then that is how we were waiting and it is the philanthropic work it is not for us so you have promised you have to keep up your promise he said no 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 i can give you only half then he said no we will not allow you to break your promise you don't give us that all we will not take he refused just to keep up his promise he is very important so you don't break your promise and have sin so he refused to take that money and came away so once you know girish chandra ghosh was in great difficulty when all people were calling holy mother as only their guru's wife guru patni that was how they revered holy mother but it was niranjana swami who asked to she is not guru patni she is jagat janani she is the mother of the whole universe just like sri ram krishna was the avatara brahman she is the brahma shakti so she is brahma she is not a simply guru patni he had so much of devotion when girish chandra ghosh was in great bereavement of his wife his child so he took girish chandra ghosh come let us go to mother all your grief will go away he took him to jairambati they stayed there for quite some time then girish chandra ghosh regained his mental health mother was also very much pleased the whole people of jairambati they were all very happy they would come and ask girish chandra ghosh you sing that song from your drama this song you sing that so he used to sing to that villagers was so happy at that time one of the brothers of holy mother came and told girish chandra ghosh you call my sister jagat janani the devi and she is durga we don't see anything we see only our sister then girish chandra ghosh he said you fellow you you wretched brahmin you run behind one old bull if it is offer to you so for that one you go 10 times to some zamindar's house and stand attention before him to such a fellow who is attached to the worldly things do you think you will see mother you give up your attachment to the world then you will know your sister is the jagat janani so all these incidents took place during that visit of girish chandra ghosh mother was also very happy so then mother was in calcutta in 1904 swami niranjanan ji at that time became very seriously ill and serious dysentery so he knew that last as days have come he was hardly 42 years at that time 41 years at that time he he thought my days are over so he came to holy mother he said i will stay with you and you must cook for me so mother herself used to cook and feed feed him so for two or three days he stayed with her and then afterwards on the end of the third day he parted from her took farewell from her and he was full of tears mother was also full of tears because both of them knew that that was the last time they are going to meet on this world so after which she left for haridwar so haridwar he did at that time 1904 we had our center there 1902 1901 it still had been started the kankal seva ashram but he would not stay in our ashram he went and stayed on the banks of ganga itself you see ramchandra also went to sarayu and went into sarayu and gave up his body here is ramchandra's amsha he must also do the same thing he went and stayed in a small house on the side of ganga he would refuse to allow anybody there so some brahmachari went from our, our ashram sir ashram senior swami sir sent me that i should serve you he said serving me no i will serve myself don't enter here he did not allow him to enter his house then afterwards after a few hours he went and saw maharaj had given up his body in maha samadhi so he gave up his body on the 9th may of 1904 he was only 41 years and 9 months but all through he was always full of sri ram krishna wherever he went he would preach sri ram krishna and sri ram krishna called him as an ishwar koti and swami ji used to love him because of the heroic mood he had never was afraid of anything 
afraid of any person afraid of any difficulty in life also he faced everything very boldly and a highly spiritual person so he had left a legend behind him and he is one of the five ishwar kotis of sri ramakrishna disciples today is the jayanti day of him we are all very blessed that we we could go through some of the incidents of his life may we pray to sri ramakrishna holy mother swami ji and swami niranjanan ji for our spiritual as well as worldly welfare niranjanam nityamananta roopam భక్తానుకంపాధృత విగ్రహం వై ఈశావతారం పరమేశమీడ్యం తం రామకృష్ణం శిరసా నమా